Welcome everybody. I am making this video because making data packs is annoying and I found something that makes it a lot less annoying. So before we get into the whole tutorial side of things, I just want to give a little example to show why making data packs is so annoying. So let's say I'm making a data pack and I want to make it so I, this function strikes every single cow in the world with lightning. Um, so we'll say on summon lightning bolt. Perfect. Um, but now, I also want to make it so when they're struck with lightning, they say, ow. So we can add another line and say, ow. Now, if you're a bit more experienced with uh, developing data packs, this should be setting off alarm bells. We're doing two at E calls here that are exactly the same, which is a little bit unnecessary, a bit more unoptimized. So our solution to that is that we put it into a separate function. So we'll make a new function. We'll call it uh, strike lightning say ow, that MC function. Very creative. And instead we'll just call a function. So we'll say run function, strike lightning, say ow. Oh, and I gotta add the namespace. And then we can do summon lightning and oh, say ow. Now let's say we're feeling a little bit bad for a cow. So we wanna give him a pet cat. So we'll say summon cat. And actually we're gonna run some commands on this cat too. Um, so we'll do execute summon cat, run, maybe we'll give it some heart particles because the cat loves the cow. Uh, particle heart. And maybe we also want to make this cat say, I love you cow, because the cat loves the cow. And it's in all cats because the cat really loves the cow. And oh shoot, we're summoning two cats now. That's a problem. Uh, so we'll have to make another function. And we'll put in here, particle heart and say, I love you, cow. So great, now our cow has a friend. Um, but there's a problem here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code spread across three files. That is not a very good line of code to file ratio. Now, wouldn't it be nice if instead of having to make a whole new function, we could just do something like summon lightning and say, ow, all in one file. Now, this is precisely what Bolt does. Um, so Bolt is a precompiler for Minecraft commands, and it lets you do stuff like this, um, has neat little tricks to make things easier, but it also adds in the entire language of Python and allows you to use Python to write commands. So with that introduction out of the way, let's get right into it. So the first step in getting Bolt on your system is actually getting Python. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about how to do that in this video. Uh, if you're struggling with that, say look for videos elsewhere because there's a lot of other people who have explained it better than I could. Um, but once you've got Python installed, you can do, well, open up a command prompt and type pip install beat. Uh, I'm not gonna run it because I already have beat. But once you've done that, you'll do pip install bolt. And once you do that, you will have bolt installed on your system just like that. Now, once you've got Bolt installed, uh, we can actually start making our first project. So you can make a folder anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be in your Minecraft folder. Um, and your first thing you'll make is something called beat.json. Um, and what this does is it basically has all the metadata for your project. So there's a couple things you need for your beat.json to get it to work. Um, so we'll start out with some curly braces here. And the first field we need is a name. Um, we'll just name this one Jeffrey, because I like that name. And optionally, we can give it a description if we want. So we'll just say testing out bolt. So next up is the require field. And basically what this does is, so bolt is actually a plugin for beat. And what this does is it tells the beat program to install bolt. And if you have your own plugins, you can also add those in here as well. Um, but I'm gonna keep it simple and just do bolt for now. Next up is data pack. And there's a couple things you can put in here like you know, description, pack format, that sort of thing. Um, main thing that you need though is load. And what this does is it gives you a destination for where the actual data pack is located. So I, I like to use circ. Um, so that means I'll have to make a folder called circ in the same file. And basically when I run the program, it's gonna look for a data pack inside this circ folder. Now, optionally, you can also add in a resource pack um, and it's the same format. Uh, as a data pack. Now next up is another one that you need. Um, and I'm not really going to explain this one because I don't fully understand it myself. Uh, but it is pipeline. And you have to include this thing called Mecca. Um, that's just something that Bolt uses and it needs it to work. Okay, and finally, one last field that we need is output. And what this does is it 
tells us which folder to output the actual source code to once we've compiled it. So I always like to use build. And just like that, we are ready to start developing in beat. So we can just start setting up a data pack um, like you would any normal data pack inside the circ folder. So we do data, we do our namespace, which we'll just make it example for this one. And we'll do a folder called function. And then inside here, we'll add our first bolt file. So we'll call it bolt test.mc function. Now we can put completely normal commands in here, you know, say hi, summon creeper, that sort of deal. Um, but we can also do Python code. So I could have x equals one, y equals two, and z equals three. And if I do tp at a x, y, z, these variables actually get interpreted inside of the command. So to actually run this, we need to open up a terminal. Um, and if you're not using VS code, you can just do a normal command prompt terminal as long as it's in the same folder. And we can just type beat build. And uh, so we specified that would be output in the folder build. And what we see is inside this. So we have the same uh, function copied over and we get the say hi is copied over, summon creeper is copied over, but that TP command, so these X, Y, Z, these are Python code, so they get ignored, but this TP command, the X, Y, and Z are replaced with the values that we specified for X, Y, and Z. Now, another cool thing we can do is branching code. We could do, for example, execute as at A, um, at, at S, and then we can just do a colon here, and we'll say, you know, maybe particle flame, and say, Ow, I'm on fire. Now, what happens when we build this, if we look in the output, this code, it gets interpreted as, it just automatically generates a function for us. And if we look inside that function, it has our code. Now, another cool use of this is that you can do stuff like for loops. So you could do like for i in range uh, 50. And then let's say we wanna make a, a line of fire particles. So we can do particle flame and we'll just do that. And then if we add in I here, now when we build this and look at the output code, instead of having to write all of those commands ourselves, it automatically generates them for us and it does every single value of I in that range. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You could even do stuff like functions. So I could do like def, uh, let's just say, say something twice. And we could have word as an argument and then We'll do say um, word and then say word again. And actually, so you can have Minecraft code in Python functions. Um, and the way I think of it is basically Python treats it as every time it runs into a um, Minecraft command, just treat that as like a function that ends up writing it to the output. Uh, so I could do say something twice with hello. And when I run that, so this, this code doesn't actually make a Minecraft function. This is a Python function, but what it outputs is oh, beneath all these particle commands, it says hello twice. So that's pretty, it's kind of a dumb example, but there is a lot of power in this. So another cool thing you can do is you can actually link up your pack to your world. Um, we just type beat link and then you type, uh, just whatever your world name is, you know, your world name here. Um, and obviously that's not a real world I have, but what it'll do is it'll make it so every time you do beat build, it'll actually reflect those uh, changes in your world. Now, there's one more thing I wanna show you guys, um, and it's kind of just a different way of using Bolt, and this is the way I prefer to use it. Um, instead of operating in this function folder here and like doing stuff inside MC function files, you can actually do things directly in Bolt files. So we make a folder called modules and we'll make some sort of uh, some sort of function or some sort of file. I'll just call it main.bolt. And now what we have to add is inside our beat.json, we have to specify that this bolt file is our starting point. So we'll do meta and then we do bolt and then we do entry point. And whatever we put in there ends up becoming our starting point. So in this case, example main. So what does this bolt file do? Um, so if we try to just do code in here, like, you know, Minecraft commands, we're gonna get a little warning because this isn't actually going to any function. But 
it actually allows us to write functions um, without having to make a new function file. So I can do stuff like, you know, function example, my function. And we'll just have this, I don't know, summon a cow. I guess that's what we're doing today. Um, and when I run the code, it'll actually make a new function file. And let's see if, we, oh, there's my function, summon cow. Um, so we can actually make a ton of functions. Um, so I could like make, you know, my function too. And it would summon a creeper instead. And you'll see, they both get made. So we have two function files made from one file here. And this is much more convenient personally um, for organizing things. And what's cool is that it even lets you do things like advancements. So you could do like advancement um, example, my advancement. And I'm not gonna spend much time writing out all the syntax. You have to do it like this with a curly brace instead of uh, a colon. But yeah, you write your advancement in here and it'll actually make an advancement in the output. And you can even do things like function tags. Um, you can do like append function tag, um, Minecraft tick. And you just add values and like, you know, your, your function here. And instead of having to go in and add your own file and everything, you can actually just do it directly through this bolt file. Um, and it very, very much helps consolidate things and keep your code less sporadic and spread all over the place. And where this gets really cool is that you can even do like libraries. So I can make another file and I'll just call it lib.bolt. And maybe I have some really cool function in here that I want other people to be able to import. I'm just gonna call it really cool function. And it's gonna print really cool thing. And on its own, this lib.bolt file actually will not run because it's not specified in our entry point, but we can import it from our main one. I could do import dot slash lib. Oh, and actually this is a, a good learning point right here. All of your module files, when you're trying to import them, you have to specify by the namespace. So example lib. And you don't need this dot slash there. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, and then you run into another error um, because Python doesn't like it if you try to import something with a colon in it. So you got to add as, and then whatever name. Uh, we'll name it Jeffrey, because that's the name of the day. And actually, we could also do, instead of naming it, we could do from example lib import really cool function. Um, and then we can use that really cool function in our code. And oh, look at that, it output, really cool thing, perfect. Now, I wanna reiterate, I know most of the examples I did in this video were pretty simple, maybe a little bit dumb, but this is actually has a lot of power. So like this example you're seeing on screen here, this is a little demo I was making with a, a math library I was making. And it lets me do things like quaternion multiplications um, in a single line of code. And instead of having to write everything out in the very verbose you know, scoreboard language that Minecraft uses, it lets me do these math operations extremely concisely. Uh, which helps a ton with, you know, managing bigger projects. And I could go on and on about all the things that Beat can do and all things that Bolt can do and how powerful they are. Um, but I want to keep this video concise. And honestly, I don't even think I know Bolt that well. Um, but <laughs> even then, I've already gotten so much use out of it. And I want other people to know about this. And if you're getting into it and you're, you know, running into problems, I highly rec recommend joining the Beat Discord. Um, there's not very good documentation yet on Beat or Bolt. Um, but there is a very good community and they're very willing to help. Um, that's how I've learned pretty much everything I know is just asking questions there. And well, I think that's about everything I got. So I hope you all have a great day. Um, I hope this is useful to you. If you make something cool with this, uh, feel free to hop in my Discord and share it. I'd love to see. Um, I always love seeing your guys' creations. And with that, that's all I got. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope you have a good one. I already said that. Okay, I'm just ending the video.